Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, treasures that fell, never enough. And you came along.
Good morning, CCC, and happy Valentine's Day, and also happy birthday to Sammy. Today is her birthday, so I wish Thank her a you. happy birthday, uh, <laughs> and happy you. Valentine's Day, Sammy, and happy Valentine's <laughs> Day to y'all, too, that is watching online. That's why you wanted to do the intro. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> why I wanted to do the intro. That is why I changed the whole plan. But I was he like, did. I he need really to change did. <laughs> Well, let me jump into my part. Okay. Okay. So we are the camp, two out of the three campus staff for the college Wait, ministry at Christ time. Community Before Church, Christmas. Victory Christian Fellowship. And college students, we just want to welcome you back. We're so excited to have you back in town. We've been missing you. And guess what? Victory's got big news. We are pursuing a space downtown for the ministry. It's on Calder Way. We have the lease. Guys, it's becoming a reality, and there's so much that God has in store for the semester that he's going to release. So come expectant to Thursday nights. Keep track of our social media. We'll give you updates about what we're doing, and welcome back. Welcome back, students. God has been moving for victory this Oof. whole time for looking for an office this whole time mm -hmm. and now we found one and we're going after it y'all and we need y'all help too because we yes. are still supporting and getting funds to make sure this comes a reality it is going to be a reality mm -hmm. but we still need some help okay you guys and moving forward on my part guess what victory is doing we having a conference we are having a Victory <laughs> Conference March 12th, mm -hmm. Friday night at 5.30, uh, and then Saturday all day. And as we have guest speakers. Uh, we have Stephanie and Craig speaking on Saturday night. We have uh, people from Georgia coming up. And they, yo, just, we have a big expectation for this weekend with this Victory Conference. So this is out, come, th this conference for everyone, our students, everyone here at CCC, uh, come out. It's only $30, and we are providing food for y'all. So you guys get food, you get rocked by the Holy Spirit, then you get fed again, then you get rocked again by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's the best time. What could be better? Nothing is better than that. So come on out. It's only $30. We will provide you food. And we are. We also have a band coming up from Pittsburgh, too. And they're so good. They are great. Oh, my goodness. They are so good. So we're going to worship, get rocked. Like, March 12th and 13th is going to be fantastic. Come out, contact us if you need a ticket. Please don't miss this experience. Oh, yeah. It's going to be amazing. Just like you said, what could be better, Jesus and food? Well, we are expectant for what God has this morning for everybody who's joining us live. And for those who are driving, joining us via live stream. So if you're just tuning in now, again, we want to welcome you to Christ Community Church. It's Valentine's Day. We're expectant for what God has this morning. I just want to encourage you to prepare your hearts to receive, prepare your mind, get cozy. You don't want to be distracted. Now is the time for a bathroom break. You don't want to have to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the service. You know, get yourself ready because God has so much. So let's pray and get ourselves ready for worship this morning. Amen. Father, I just welcome you into this place. Lord, we come expectant to hear from you. We are your people. We are those who you have called, loved, and worthy. So we come ready to bring you praise because God, you are so worthy of every praise that we have. Would your praise be on our lips at all times, Father? Would we know what it is to serve a God who is love, that loves unconditionally, that loves purely? Father, the promises that you have for us are bountiful. 
And as we come into your presence this morning, would you just continue to speak truth to us through the word that Pastor Mitch has and through the worship that we bring before you? Would it be pleasing to your ears, Lord? Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. All right, good morning, everyone. Hey, thanks for joining us this morning. Hey, let's stand together. Listen, before we, we get going into worship, just one matter right here. <laughs> we need to sing happy birthday to Pastor Sammy here. So we're going to do that together, Ooh. shall we? All right, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Celebrating happy Sammy's birthday. birthday today. Thank you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> happy <laughs> birthday, <laughs> dear Sammy. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Woo. Yes, Woo. Sammy. Thank you. How old, How old are you now? In honor I, of you, I, Sammy. I was tricked. Okay, just so you know, when you go back and you look at it, for you. Thank you. All right.
As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us.
Yeah, Lord, we welcome you. Find it this morning. Lord, we're reminded this morning, we hold on to our dead places way too long. That's what I just sense the Holy Spirit inviting us to do this morning is to surrender. And we're, we're used to understanding surrender from a place of coming to Him and giving our lives to Christ. But this morning, I'm reminded that, you know, God, we sang in that song, Rattle, God is able He is able. He is willing. He can do anything that He wants to. And as we sang that, I felt the Lord saying to me and to you, why don't you surrender your own ability? Surrender those dead places in your life you are trying to revive. Surrender those pains. Like I have this really, really bad back pain this morning. It's, it's like just annoying. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out how do I fix it? Do I use a heat pad? Do I do this? Because it's like, it's annoying. How many of you have been there? Something in your life is just not working the way it should. And our tendency is to try to fix it, and that's good. But the Lord this morning is inviting you to surrender it to His ability. I want to be in that place. So why don't you, if you've got it in your life, whatever it might be, it could be a relationship that's broken. It could be a job situation that looks like it's done, it's dead. It could be your body, your physical body, something broken. Maybe you're watching and you have back pain, or you're here and you have back pain. Why don't you just surrender to the Lord? Yeah. And we're going we're gonna to sing that. I love, I don't know if it's a bridge or what part of that song it is, where it says, My God is able. We're going to sing that as, as our, our words of surrender. Maybe you can't. If you don't want to sing it, just say it. God, you are able to save, deliver, heal, restore anything you want to. And I'm, I'm one of those things you want to work in, Lord. Yeah, you sent your only son to die for me. You didn't hold anything back. So, Lord, I surrender to your ability. I surrender to your will, your willingness, your power to save, to heal, to restore, to redeem what I can't redeem. Some of us have places that are so dead we've ignored them. And the Lord says this morning, surrender that to me. I am more than able. <laughs> he says he's more than able. Father, we just release that into this place. Lord, Lord, you send your word to heal. You send your word to do some work, Lord. So this morning, we release your word that you are able, you are willing. God, you are present. Your power is present. You are the one who can break chains. You are the one who can revive dead bones. There's nothing too difficult for you. There's nothing too difficult for you. I'm not standing in the way anymore of my own breakthrough. Yeah, and Lord, we declare it. My God is able to save, deliver, and heal, and restore anything that He wants to. My God is able to save, and deliver, and heal, and restore anything. Yeah. Say it again. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that He wants to. My God is able to save. Yes, Lord, we sing into it. We pray into it this morning. We surrender.
to bring it. He's there, arms wide open, but you got to bring it. So Lord, I bring it. All my brokenness, all my pain, I surrender. Why don't you say it to him like you're meaning, I surrender. I surrender. I'm no longer going to hold on to those dead things. I surrender them to your power, your ability. Yeah. Man, when God shows up, it's never over. It's never over, folks. Yeah, Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. God, that we can bring ourselves just as we are. And that's how you prefer it, Lord. We don't have to clean up the act. We just come just as we are. And Lord, we just declare, these aren't just words we're singing, that God, we're going to see your salvation. We're going to see your breakthrough in our lives. If you agree, say amen. Amen. Woo! Oh, that hurt. <laughs> we praise God. It's going to be healed. How about you say hello to somebody? Yeah, something we used to say back in, uh, you probably say it here too, but if you don't know, I'm originally from Ghana, and in the, in the, in the church I grew up in, we used to say the devil is a liar. And he is a liar. In all the ways he lies to you, he is a liar. The truth comes from the Lord. And we're going to trust this truth that we are healed, we're restored. Somebody excited this morning? Okay. I'm excited. I'm thankful for the love of God. Anyway. All right. I guess I have to introduce myself. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Sal. Always a pleasure to welcome you to worship. I see the kids are already moving a, a, around. The kids are dismissed. And uh, have a couple of announcements, and then we'll pray for our service and our offering. So we are continuing our journey with Jesus. It's a series we're doing, reading through the book of Luke. Uh, there are these cards, these bookmarks out there if you want to get it. It kind of shows you what the readings are, what days, what weeks we're reading, and you can follow along that the different weeks have different readings, like the first week was Luke 1 through 3, and then and, and on and on. So please pick this up. It's, a, it's well designed too, so it's nice as a bookmark. Anyway, but, but join us. This week is Luke 4 through 6. So if you'd like to be a part of that, dive into it. I believe Pastor Mitch will, will be speaking on, on that as well. So all right, so you, we are asking you to pick up a bulletin today because we have weekly, weekly activities plus some of our upcoming events listed in our bulletin. So if you would, please pick that up. It would be informative to you. Um, and you can participate, join us in what we're doing. All right, I want to read the scripture. How many of you know what today is? So I have to admit, I don't, Tisha's probably watching this right now, but I nearly forgot this morning. I was this close, you know, so I did not forget, all right, Tisha, but it's Valentine's Day, and we celebrate, you know, the love in our lives, all the people who've blessed us and loved us, and I just want to read the scripture you know so well, uh, John three sixteen says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but that the world through him might be saved. And so I hope you are reminded this morning, every morning, of God's love for you. I mean, so many times, like, coming in this morning, I'm like, oh, I'm feeling down, I'm not feeling myself, but I'm thankful for this mic, right? I can project without having to scream. And so many little things happen in your life that God wants to remind you, he loves you. He's for you. He's not against you. And he gave the ultimate gift. Your ultimate Valentine's Day gift was his one and only son. Why? So you would be saved. Come on. Come on. Just so that you would be redeemed. Not, not because he, he thought it was a nice thing to do. It's for you. So you would be redeemed. That's awesome. So remember that in all you do, even in your giving, remember that. I mean, he's already put his... his, uh, his uh, his lot, so to speak. He's already cast his lot on you. He's for you, not against you. And when we give, we're remembering that and we're saying to him, Lord, we acknowledge you. We acknowledge your love in our lives. 
and we align ourselves with you. Let's pray. Yeah, Father, we thank you that you do love us, that you did send your son to die in our place so that we could have eternal life with you and we could be saved. We owe you everything because of that. Lord, remind us daily that we owe you everything. And God, in our acts of giving and our acts of worship, all we're doing is just saying, yes, Lord, we accept your role in our lives as our Lord and our Savior, our provider. Yeah, we love you, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we all said amen. Amen. As long as you're in it, the story's not finished. I know you've overcome. So I know I'll overcome As long as you're in it The story's not finished I know you've overcome So I know I'll overcome As long as you're in it The story's not finished I know you've overcome so I know I'll overcome As long as you're in it The story's not finished I know you've overcome So I know I'll overcome so Bring that breakthrough Miracle Power pour out I need a breakthrough Miracle story's not finished as long as you're in it the story's not finished as long as you're in it Lord. church let's just take a moment <clears throat> he's the God of the now he's with us he's here Lord Jesus, we just recognize your presence. Lord, I pray let everyone in this room, Lord, I pray everyone watching online, Jesus, I pray that you would just make us more aware of your presence. The cell did a great job, Lord, just, Lord, as we just sang and just worshiped you. Lord, we pray let it just be pleasing, let it be acceptable to you. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name. Everyone sit a big... Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor McConaughey. Good morning, Valentine's Day. I know all you guys are all set, ready to go. Uh, so good to see you all. You've overcome ice and all the slushy stuff. First service was amazing. Had a wonderful time. We're looking forward to this service, see what God wants to do in our midst. It amazes me how many people show up to get their, in this case, get their daughters to a basketball game. They overcome ice, they overcome weather, travel from long distances so their kids can play, this is my opinion, in, in irrelevant, like meaningless basketball games where they bring them. And yet when it comes to church, you guys have overcome, but a lot of people just simply stay at home. It's like, oh, the weather's just, I can't drive a few miles to come to church or whatever. And I was talking, and Jenny, I thought, had a very insightful comment. She said the reason why they're driving these distances and the reason why they're coming here is because they paid a lot of money. They're invested. They've given all this money to be a part of this tournament. They're not going to miss it no matter what the weather's doing. And that just made me think about the church. When you're invested, you don't want to miss. You've invested your time, resources. You are invested like I'm not missing because I'm invested in what's going on. And I'm here just to encourage you because you've made the decision, I'm just just trying to 
just encourage you this morning. God has something for you to speak to you today, right now, at this service. Yeah. And um, so we'll just jump right into it and just uh, see all, what all God has for you. But first service was amazing. We're going to see some more things happen this service. I'm just telling you guys, be ready. Have your ears, uh, spiritual ears on, antennas up, ready to receive what God has because he's, he's got a good word for you guys this morning. Uh, having said that, we're doing this study through the book of Luke. Uh, we're going through, as you've read, hopefully you've read through this past week, chapters 1 through 3. Uh, we'll start tomorrow, chapters 4 through 6, and I'll cover it next Sunday. Uh, we're just going through the journey of the journey with Jesus. And uh, one of the things that inspires me about the gospel of Luke is Luke was a Gentile writer. He was writing to a larger audience to convince them that Jesus was more than just a Jewish Messiah. That Jesus, listen to this, Jesus was the Savior of the world. That Jesus came not just for that little ragtag bunch of Jewish disciples, but Jesus came for the whole world. Every person on planet Earth needs a Savior, and Jesus said, I'm it. So this whole story that we're reading, this narrative is real life. It's not just a history book. And I'm, I'm always fascinated with people who read the Bible like a history book, and it's not that. It's a living word. It's a living document. It's a, uh, it's a narratives are told to us to get us ready for this generation. So let me reiterate. There's 150 chapters in the Bible that deal with this generation, this end time church. There's 150 chapters that specifically foretell things that God is going to do in this age, in this moment, at this time. You and I are a part of that generation. We're a part of that, of that end time move of God. We are seeing the Lord do some amazing things and it's just so inspiring. And so when we read these stories, the narratives that are there uh, in the Bible, this is that they're written for our example. They're written so that we can receive instruction, so that as we go through our journey in life, that we can see how other people have acted and responded to the word of the Lord to them, and you have to make choices. And we all have choices to make. You've obviously made a choice to be here this morning, and I'm so grateful and thankful. For me to get up and speak, I'm just so grateful and thankful to Jesus and the vision he gave me, the visitation I had years ago that just, that just changed the course of my life. He's still in that business today. He's in the business of changing lives. He's in the business of meeting with his people. He's in the business of being the Savior for you, me, for us, that he will come and he'll deliver us, set us free, help us walk in our freedom, walk in our destiny, fulfill our calling. These are all the things that God has for us. And he wants to meet with us this morning. He wants to do some things. And so in our journey with Jesus, so I just want to prepare you as we go through this that the Lord has just some amazing things for us. So let me stop just a moment and just pause. i got a couple of quick announcements. One is if you have been giving money and your tax return from the church, the numbers are off or different or you have more than that, whatever, we've had a software glitch. Uh, we're transferring systems and so in our accounting office. So if you'll just kind of get in touch with our accounting office, we'll be glad to work with you on numbers to make sure you get your tax returns, et cetera. But if you have different numbers because our January, February, and March of 2020 uh, we're just having trouble getting that system to speak to our other newer system that we have. And all I can do is just apologize. And if you'll work with us, uh, I know Pastor Rose is uh, over that and also Melina. And they're working so hard to, to try to get you guys the right numbers. So don't get discouraged. Don't get Just let us know and we'll work with you about that, okay? Number two is that uh, we had some guys here last night. Because as a community of faith, we've decided we've dedicated our building to being a community center so we were not able to come into the building till late last night. We had uh, started set up at 9.30 last night. Guys were here. So I just want to thank Joel Watkins and Nate and Don and all these guys that are there. Just uh, uh, the Alan Scott band guys were there. Just give them a big hand. They were here to about midnight working to get this set up for us. So I'm just so, so thankful. So thank you all very much for that. All right, Valentine's Day. The Lord, the, the Bible is like a Valentine's. It's like God's message to you and I, that he loves us, he cares for us, he's involved in your life, he wants the best for you, he has plans for your life. And so when you read the Bible, as I had one guy share with it uh, when I was sitting in a, a sermon the other day or back several years ago, he talked about that if the Bible is a love letter, if you're not in love with Jesus and you don't know Jesus, then when you read the Bible, the Bible to you is like reading somebody else's love letters. 
It's like if you had any siblings and they had a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever and they talked about how they expressed their, their uh, care, their affection, their love for one another, and you read the letter, I'm sure it'd be interesting. It's just not addressed to you. But the Bible wants to be a love letter from God addressing to you that he's concerned about you, that he loves you and he's for you and he has a plan for your life. And then when you read the Bible in that context, all of a sudden it takes on a whole different meaning because it's God pinning a love letter from his heart to you. And so when the Lord gives us a word, when the God speaks a word to you, I hope as we study this, uh, these scriptures this morning that you'll treasure the word of the Lord. Then when God gives insight to you and God gives you understanding and God gives you clarity and God gives you a revelation and God speaks to you, that you'll treasure that word, that you'll take it to heart, that you'll make it uh, not just another word that you just sort of like ignore and move on, but you'll really treasure that word and let it sustain you. Let it be the guiding force of your life. Let it be the, uh, the word that helps get you through difficult times. Let it be the word that gives you direction. Let it be the word that causes, inspires you to do great things for mankind. Amen. Just let God just do some amazing things. There's, there's just, it's so exciting when you're in the presence of the Lord. So when you read these verses, we'll start in Luke chapter 1. Is it the gospel of Luke? Again, he's introducing the community that Jesus is more than a Jewish Messiah. And you read through all the different verses. So we'll be looking at chapters 1, 2, and 3. I know another church in town, they did a study in the book of Luke. And in one year, they made it through Luke chapter 7. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I'm not bent like that. I can't, uh, it just, it, that would just, it would just, uh, for me personally. So we're going to read all these chapters, read them on your own. You let the Lord speak to you. I'm going to highlight to you the things I feel like God speaks to me to share as we go through each chapter. But it's not going to be a chapter by chapter, word by word study that we go through this in this eight weeks with the book of Luke. Has everybody got that? Okay. So you've got to do your homework, read your chapters, come ready so that when I refer to things, you're not just sitting here staring at me like, really? It's, yeah, it's in there. You read it and you can go through it. Okay. So in Luke chapter 1, he's talking about that, he, that all these different accounts about Jesus, and he's saying to, uh, the, to the man, Theopolis, he's speaking to him. He says, you know, there's many different accounts, but I've compiled, I, Luke the physician, have compiled this account from eyewitnesses. These are people who can verify the very things that I'm writing about. They were eyewitnesses to these, to these narratives, to these stories. You can be assured of that what I'm writing to you, it's the truth. But he goes on to say this in verse in Luke chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. He says, With this in mind, as I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theopolis. Now let me just say this. The gospel of Luke is also the same author of the book of Acts. So when you read through the book of Luke, I would encourage you to stop when you get through with Luke 24 and then just go right over to Acts chapter 1. It's the same author and just continue on because he continues the journey and the writings about all the things that Jesus began to do. But it's interesting when he talks about Theopolis, the Theopolis in the actual Greek there means lover of God. So Luke is writing the Bible to, for people who love God. That's why when you go into our culture, I don't know if you guys saw this the other day, there was a, uh, a congressman that got up and declared about the people who stormed the Capitol and they heard them sing and shout, they wanted the Calvary to come. Well, the Calvary in the Bible is different than the Calvary in the army. <laughs> Calvary in the Bible is the cross of Jesus. But if you don't know the Bible and you hear people crying out for the Calvary, you're thinking, man, these people are at war. They're at war. They're trying, to, they're trying to overthrow the Capitol building. They're bringing in all these outsiders. And that's why, because the Bible was written for people who love God. Amen. So when you try to go and quote the Bible to people, a lot of times people say, I don't believe the Bible. It's just old wives' tales. You know, my grandmother, bless her heart, her name was Inez, Inez Smith. She died when she was like 97 years old or 95. She was just an amazing woman, single mom, raised my dad, his, his older brother, his older sister. And, uh, you know, my, my grandmother, I remember when I was a little kid, I'd go over to her house, and my brother and I would go over to her house, and, you know, she'd always, she'd always tell me, go, Mitchell, you're my favorite grandchild. You're my favorite one. I was like, yeah, me and Grandma, we're tight. But, you know, Grandma had a lot of old wives' tales. 
she would uh, get, say sort of stuff that just wasn't really true. Like, for instance, if you had a sore throat, she'd say, go, go, to, your, go to your dirty clothes and get a dirty old wool sock and just wrap it around, wrap it around your neck, <laughs> wrap it around your neck, and it'll make your sore throat go away. And my grandma would always say, you know, get that Vicks Vapor Rub, rub it all over you, it makes you feel better. And she, would, and she would do all these old home remedies and stuff. It was just what they call old wives' tale. Well, Luke is writing to say to you and I that this is not old wives' tales, that these are not just good ideas, that this is the word of the Lord. This is the Lord speaking to his people. This is Jesus communicating through his people things that he's doing in the earth today. For instance, uh, Pastor Dean and I had a chance to meet with the Millers. I know Craig and Stephanie, and they run uh, a, a Radiant Life Ministries, and they're, they're on all these international calls with all these people from all over the world. And they're talking about some incredible, we're going to find a way to get the word out, which reminds me all throughout the week, we have lots of people that are doing things on uh, all the social media that we'll just do our better job of getting communications. You guys can be a part. So Pastor Dean, I shared some of these stories on Friday on my weekly uh, uh, broadcast that I share with you guys. But here's what happened is that they talked about Jesus is appearing to people, and we share bits and pieces of this. But Jesus is appearing to people in their dreams and visions, walking in, and people who are living in some of the most repressive governments on earth, Jesus is walking into their society, walking into their families, walking into their homes, declaring himself to be their Lord and Savior. People who are Muslim, grown up Muslim, had no desire to read the Bible, no desire to think about the spiritual things about God, are turning their lives over to Christ, and just in a few months, a time, this family, I won't go through the whole story, but anyway, they went back to the nation of Iran, and they've got over 5,000 people in their church. 5,000 people in their church because Jesus is coming. So what I'm saying is that the Lord's doing some amazing things. And it would behoove you and, and me to be lovers of God. Love God with all your heart. Be a man of action. Be a woman of action. Obey the Lord when he speaks to you. Obey what he tells you to do. So he says, Theopolis, I want you to know so you may know the certainty of the things that you've been taught. Now, having said that, I want to talk to you about a prophetic word of the Lord. A prophetic word of the Lord is always, it's based in the Bible, but it has to do with a now situation or a future event that God wants to do in the life of that person. So I've gotten two examples for you this morning because when you get a prophetic word from God, which means God is speaking to you about your situation. For instance, God can be speaking to you about healing. The Lord this morning may just speak to you and just say, you know, I'm going to heal your body of this disease that's going on. The Lord could be speaking to you about a relationship. You could be telling you, you know what, I'm going to move on your behalf in this relationship. Maybe you're going through a separation or a divorce, and the Lord's going to speak, and he's going to do some things in your life. Maybe he's having you minister forgiveness. You know, the apostles asked Jesus, how many often should we forgive? And he said, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Forgiveness becomes a way of life. Can I get an amen? amen. Because I'm just telling you, forgiveness is very important to walk with Jesus. Or the Lord could be talking to you about your finances. Maybe you're in a place where that you're under severe strain and you've got just financial pressure on your life and I'm here to declare to you, maybe the Lord, the Lord will give you a prophetic word and give you an idea, give you a breakthrough idea that will generate uh, uh, meeting the needs of people in our community or in our society and you'll make millions of dollars and you become wealthy. I mean, I don't know what all the Lord's going to speak to you. The Lord could take the, speak to you about, about uh, personal ministry. Lord could be calling some of you to be teachers and preachers and uh, prophets and uh, evangelists and pastors, all this kind of stuff. I mean, I don't know what the Lord's going to say. I just know when the Lord speaks to you, the two examples we have is that it will always bring a response from you when God speaks to you. For instance, when God spoke to me, we had an altar call. This is way back when I was in, uh, I think I was still in high school. And I don't even remember who was speaking. But he just said, you know, if you'll come forward, I'm going to speak to you. The Lord will speak to you, and he'll minister to you. So I went forward, not knowing what to expect. I'm just standing there, and I'm just listening to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me, and God says, I've called you to be a prophet. And I can tell you right now, I was so disappointed. <laughs> I was like, really? Because all I could think about was wearing, like, sackcloth, you know, the long bony finger and, you know, long beard, and, you know. And I just, but, you know, I didn't know enough scripture back then, as I've learned since then, then honestly, God's desire is for every person who's a follower of Christ 
Every person, what you catch is every person is to be a prophet for the Lord. God's desire was that all my people would be prophets. Think about that. So don't be looking at me like you know, I got three heads. God's called you into the prophetic ministry. It just means just speaking on God's behalf. It just means taking his word and just putting it into a situation and seeing God bring healing and deliverance and freedom. It's going to a person who's battling addiction and saying, you know what? The Lord Jesus Christ has come to set you free today from your addiction. You're no longer going to be an alcoholic. You're no longer going to be a drug addict. You're no longer going to be bound by pornography. Why is that? Because the word of the Lord is here. And where Jesus shows up, people get set free. Jesus Jesus delivers people. That's the word of the Lord. That's what God's after. He's looking for his people. He's looking to engage with the community of faith. It just says, "This this is my plan. I want you to engage with me because we're doing some great things in the earth today. I just want to be a part of it. Amen. So do you. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. We're seeing God do some amazing things. We're going to do an altar call in a little while, and we're going to let God speak to you, and God's going to download information just about you, for you, and your situation. And it's going to be exciting when God speaks to you. You're going to be so glad that you came this morning, letting the Lord just minister to his people. But let's look at the responses, because God speaks a prophetic word. What's the response? Well, the one I chose is is right there in in Luke chapter 1. It's the the Old, Old Testament priest, Zechariah. Zechariah being the high priest that year, it meant that he had to go into the Holy of Holies. In the, in the tabernacle, they had three different rooms, and the Holy of Holies was the third room that only once a year, the high priest went in with the blood sacrifice to atone for the sins of the whole nation. So Zechariah goes in, and many of you know this, but they would tie a rope around the ankle of the high priest. As he walked into that inner room where the covenant of the ark, or ark of the covenant was, and he walked in, the presence of God was so real, they knew that if there was one little smudge of dirt, if there was one little part of their uniform that was out of place, if they had any kind of sin in their life, they walked into the very presence of God, it would destroy them. Well, you know, if, God, if God's presence is, is that powerful, when these guys would go in, then no one would go in and go drag the body out, so they had the rope. So if something happened to the priest in that moment, they could just drag him out. How many of you know that if you were in that position, you'd be very careful how you were dressed before you walked into that room? It's almost like, and I'm not trying to be uh, sacrilegious about this, but if, if you knew that, that you wanted your room full of COVID, you would dress up in a hazmat suit, you would get yourself fully because you would not want that contagious disease to be upon you. So when people walked into God's presence, they didn't just kind of nonchalantly just kind of walk in and, well, here I am. It's like, no. They came in with a reverence and an awe. Most holy God, heavenly Father, please spare my life. So here's Zechariah in this moment. Now, you know, the Bible says things just to stretch your faith. I'm telling you, the Bible, as far as your intellect, is not credible. Because it says an angel spoke to him. Maybe some of you have seen angels. Maybe some of you have had visitations. I, in my whole years of serving the Lord, have had very few angelic visitations. But I've got friends that see them all the time, talk to angels, hear angels, all this kind of stuff, highly respect what they're seeing and hearing. But Zechariah has an angelic visitation. And the angel speaks to him about his life. And here's what he says. He says about your son. He says, Zechariah, you're an old man, but here's what's going to happen. He says, your son, his name is John. We're going to name him John. He's going to go before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah. He's going to turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. He's going to make a people ready, prepared for the Lord. Now, this is very intense to me to prepare because if we're the end time church, end time generation, we want to be prepared for the Lord's return. So Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. Listen to what the angel says. He goes, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I've been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. The angel comes and he's having this conversation. And he's like, um, I'm not for sure about this. I don't know, if you're having a conversation, you're probably unsure about a lot of things. But he's talking to the angel. And the angel says, well, just to show you the sign, Zechariah, 
man of God, priest of prominent position. This is devastating to a preacher. So he wouldn't let him talk. And you know, for a preacher, that's devastating. He says, you're going to go mute for the next nine, ten months because uh, you didn't believe what I'm telling you. We're not going to let your negative confession ruin the plan of God. So, Zachariah, you're just going to be muted. We're going to zip it. How many parents ever had your, or ever had your parents tell you or you tell your kids, you know, zip it, you know, zip it. Don't want to hear no, zip it. Where's Simba? Simba got to zip it. Remember to zip it? So the point is, is that you have, you have the angel telling Zechariah, the high priest, zip it. And it's really interesting as you read the story is that the first words out of his mouth when he confirms, we're not going to call the child when he get his wife Elizabeth as the baby, John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus, the forerunner of the Lord, announces what God's going to do, calls the nation to repentance. Hundreds and thousands of people are coming to the Lord, being baptized by John the Baptist, all because of what the angel said was true. You go on to read this, that you realize that Zechariah begins to speak prophetically. He begins to declare the words of the Lord. The first words out of his mouth was his name will be called John. He's going to be named after me. He's going to be named John. And this is his destiny, and this is what he's going to do. But it took them 30 years later before John finally fulfills the word of the Lord. It took him 30 years for him to fulfill everything that God spoke to him. But his parents, Zechariah and Elizabeth, both were, uh, were faithful to the word of the Lord. They said, this is God's destiny. This is what the fulfillment of the word is. Well, why would they be faithful? Why would they have John the Baptist? Well, you read over in the prophet Malachi, he said that before the Lord comes, he's going to have one come like in the spirit of the, of the prophet Elijah. He's going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the hearts of the children to the fathers. He says, I'm going to come and bring a restoration. And that's what the angel told Zechariah. He says, your son, John, is going to be just like the spirit of the prophet Elijah. And he's going to turn this generation around. I believe that God's looking for churches today that will be prophet, that will partner with him to be a prophetic voice. I believe that God's looking for a community of faith that will learn how to restore people back to God, that it takes total commitment. You know, when Jesus speaks to you, you got to be all in. You can't be half-hearted. In this day and age where we're living and where we're at, you've got to be totally committed to the purposes of God for you and your family. And you just got to go in. You just can't make exceptions. You can't always give people, like, give them excuses like, no, man, I've got I've to be all in for the things of God. I've got to walk all the way into this. Either I believe all of it or I believe none of it. If the Lord speaks to you, let me talk to you just for a second, like, about water baptism. That's the next step. If you give your life to Christ, get water baptized. We'll be doing baptisms on Palm Sunday, the last Sunday in March. But I want to just think, declare to you, you have to walk it out. It has to be your faith. When Jesus was baptized, he was baptized as an adult. Jesus was baptized to be the standard for us. We watch what his life was. And his, his cousin, John, who we were just talking about, Zachariah, his dad, uh, prophesied over the destiny of his son, John. He'd be a forerunner. John's out preaching. Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, comes to John and says, I need to be baptized. And so Jesus gets baptized. So I would encourage you, if you've, been, if you've been confirmed or sprinkled or baptized as an infant, that's a wonderful faith for, by your parents, by your family. But you need to make that decision. You have to make a decision for yourself to obey the word of God, to go for water baptism. Baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's the other part of this. It's the package of just receiving God's power where the Holy Spirit fills you up. It's a second step. It's a, it's a second experience where the Holy Spirit just comes and just overshadows you. You just have just a, a wonderful time as you begin to realize the Holy Spirit's your teacher, comforter. He's the uh, revealer. He's the one that brings the words of Jesus to mind. He's the one that guides you. He's your instructor. I mean, man, I don't know how you can do it without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's all types of spiritual gifts that go into that experience. And God is equipping his church to fulfill, if you would, a role like John the Baptist, drawing our nation back to repentance. Amen. Yes. Well, Zechariah didn't believe the word of the Lord, so he got muted. So if some of you start getting muted, I'll know what happened. You, you, didn't believe, you didn't believe the word of the Lord. I would encourage you, be a believer. Now, the second example is, the, is uh, we'll look at Mary, the mother of Jesus. Listen to what she says when the angel comes to her and the things he tells her are more difficult than when they told Zechariah. Zechariah just said, I'm an old man, and I've, quote, got the old lady, you know, and we're, we're going to have a kid. I don't believe it, but okay. And then God says, okay, yeah, you are going to have a child, and you're not going to speak anymore. But listen to what the angel tells Mary. 
The angel comes to Mary and says, hey, you're highly favored of the Lord and you're going to have a son. And the angel came and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. And just to confirm that you're not dreaming like delusional visions, your cousin Mary has had this, uh, uh, your, your, I'm sorry, your Aunt Elizabeth. It says, now therefore that holy one who is born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. Then Mary goes on to say it's that Elizabeth was in her sixth month and that it was impossible for her who was barren to have children. But God says to her, he says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. And I want you to turn to somebody and say, you know, with God, nothing is impossible. Turn to your neighbor and say, with God, nothing is impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. And I'm here to say it again. I just want to say it one more time. With God, nothing is impossible. So when, Mary, so when Mary came in, when Mary came into the angel and he speaks to her, listen to this. The angel says, you're going to have a son. She goes, I'm not in a relationship where I'm even married. How am I going to have a son? And the angel says, well, the Holy Spirit's going to overshadow and you're going to conceive the seed of woman. Now, why is this important? Because in Genesis 3.15, when God was speaking to the serpent, Adam and Eve had committed treason against God, decided they didn't need God, they could be their own gods, and God brought in judgment. And he spoke to the serpent. He said this. He says, not only are you going to crawl around all the days of all serpents are going to be you know, crawling and eat the dust of the ground. But he says this. From the seed of woman will come one who will break your authority over mankind. That's why Mary cannot have a husband to be a part of the divine conception. It's what had to be the seed of woman. Why? Because God spoke it back in the Garden of of Eden. God spoke to Adam and Eve and said, I'm going to bring a deliverer. And all through the ages and all through the years, God's brought this deliverer. His name is Jesus. And he's going to set my people free from their sin. That's why I can stand before you this morning and declare to you, I don't care what addiction you've been in. I don't care what lifestyle you've been in. I don't care what type of attitudes or situations you've been exposed to. If you've been abused, if you've been hurt, we will pray for you. God will heal you. But I'm telling you, God will break the control, the slavery of sin over your life. It's a fulfillment of the promise he made when he spoke to Mary that your son, Jesus, is going to be the seed of woman. And through his death and resurrection, he will break the power of sin that controls mankind that you can be a free people. You can walk free from sin. You don't have to sin. You can go seconds without sinning. You can go minutes without sinning, hours, days, weeks, without being controlled by sin. You can see God just increase your righteousness where he just begins to restore to you what it means, according to Romans six twelve, that sin shall not have dominion over you. You can walk as free people. You do not have to give in to bitterness, amen. You do not have to give in to resentment. You do not have to give in to pride and lust and ego and all those things that feed into all types of sins or fear, all that stuff. You can walk free. Why? Because the seed of woman has come. Jesus has come. He's, born, he's been birthed into the earth. He lived his life. He died, rose again. He's alive today. He's here now, and he's still setting captives free. That's the joy we have. But listen to what Mary said. Mary speaks to, the, speaks to the angel and says, be it unto me according to your word. What an incredible heart she had. She said, God, be it unto me according to your word. Let that be the attitude of our hearts. When God speaks to you this morning, God gives you a word this morning. The Lord speaks to your heart and tells you something. Let it be said to you as like Mary, Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. You can read all throughout the book. Usually we do it at Christmas time, but you can read all the different visitations that came. Then Mary, when she took Jesus to be circumcised, and she entered her 40-day period, and she brought him into the temple. She met uh, Anna, and she met uh, Simeon, and she met the shepherds as they came, and they began to worship the three wise men. I could go through all these confirmations that came about, but it says that Mary did this, and she took these words, all these different sources brought to her about Jesus. It says that she treasured them in her heart. She took the word of the Lord and she hid it in her heart. She said, God, let it be true unto me as you've spoken. When God speaks to you, maybe God's given some of you a healing ministry. 
Maybe God's given some of you a deliverance ministry. Maybe God's given some of you some incredible, I just could just go on and on with all the possibilities that happens. Let's be like Mary. Let's have the action step in our lives to say, God, be it unto me according to your word. Jesus, I trust you. You've forgiven me. You've saved me. You've delivered me. Now, Lord, just use me. And let the Lord speak to you. Let him begin to stir up. Let him begin to invigorate. Let him begin just to, just to cause the things that he's destined you for. We're living in this end time generation. We're living where John the Baptist, if you would, needs to arise and declare to people, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. Jesus is coming. We want to be ready. We want to look at the steps they took in that generation because we're living in that time period. We're living in that moment where the Spirit of God is asking the church to be like Mary, to take that prophetic word. So I'm just putting seed out there because we're going to do an altar call in just a moment. Let me just we finish up with this last verse. In Luke chapter 3, verses 3 and 4, here's talking about John the Baptist. He fulfilled the ministry 30 years after the angel spoke to his dad, Zechariah. He, John, went into all the country around the Jordan preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight paths for him. So as I conclude this message, let me just encourage you with this. Holiness is what God calls his people to have. You have to walk in holiness. That doesn't mean that you never sin. doesn't mean that you're always perfect. It means that when you sin or when you mess up, you're quick to make it right. Don't let it go for weeks or months. Just let it just be for a few minutes. Say, Lord, I spoke harshly. I spoke rashly. I spoke in an irritable way. God, forgive me, Lord. I, think, I was thinking about some things that weren't pure or holy. God, and you just, and you just get it right. You just get your sin. Just keep your heart right. Just keep it before the Lord saying, Jesus, just cleanse me. Lord, just deliver me. I'm just telling you, God is in, the, is in the process today of purifying his church. And all the people who are in compromise and all the people who are lukewarm and all the people, in my opinion, who've gone uh, the way of the flesh, the way of the culture, they're not going to be used the way God wants to use them. They're going to miss out on the purposes of God. They're going to miss out on the call of God. And I want to be used by God as you want to be used by God. We just have to respond. And I want you to respond like Mary. Be like Mary, not like Zechariah. Don't be like Zechariah going, how's that going to be? I don't believe that. That's not going to happen. You can't use me. I'm an old man. Well, I am old, okay, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> be like Mary. Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. I know when God spoke to me about the prophetic ministry, I'm just telling you, it's been guiding me all through the steps of my life, all through since I was in high school, college, all through ministry life, just had that inner sense, that inner witness, just that knowing that God would equip me and God would guide me and God would give me the words to get me through situations. And I'm just saying this to you, that God will give you a hearing ear. He'll give you the ability to hear his voice. It's just a matter of you have the courage to walk in it. So as I ride up this morning, let me just encourage you. If the Lord's dealing with you, any area in your life that's not right with him, this is the time to get it right. If you know you're in a relationship that's not pleasing to him, I would advise you, I would encourage you, cut that relationship off. If you're in a situation where you realize, okay, Pastor Mitch, I realize that I put my trust more in the things of my, of my life and I could go through a, lo a long series of, of things like people who are in drug addiction, people who are in alcohol addiction, uh, people who are using those as substances to cope with things in their life. Let the Lord just come in and let him just lay the ax to the root and get rid of that rejection, get rid of that hurt, get rid of that uh, rebellion that's in your lives. If you're here this morning and say, you know, Pastor Mitch, I'm in a place where I've got, I got these troubles raising my kids. I've got some really dire situations, and we prayed this over the time, but that's one of the ministries of John the Baptist was reconciliation in the family, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, hearts of the children to the fathers. And I'm just telling you, my heart is just so heavy because I know that we have a generation of young people growing up who have never seen the power of God. They've never seen the miracles. They've never seen the signs and the wonders that I've experienced. They've never seen the deliverance of God where he comes in and just sets people free. They've never seen the people who are completely like demon-possessed and seen the Lord to deliver them. They've never seen the physical signs and wonders and miracles where I've seen legs grow out and backs get healed and people, uh, people with all types of infirmities and diseases and sicknesses. 
Maybe this morning you're going through a physical problem. Maybe you're just sitting and you say, Pastor Mitch, you don't get it. I've, got, I've been diagnosed with this condition or I'm going through this chronic liver disease or I've got all these other issues that are just, just, just tormenting my body. Maybe this morning at the altar call, the Lord speaks a word to you and says, I've healed you, I've delivered you, I've set you free. And you receive that word like Mary and you walk in your body responds to the living word of God and you've been set free. Maybe you're here this morning and say, you know, Pastor Mitch, I'm really struggling financially. I mean, I've got some incredible financial pressures on my life. And maybe the Lord of the Lord comes to you and the Lord speaks to you and he says, I'm going to deliver you and set you free. I'm going to give you a promotion. I'm going to give you creative ideas. I'm going to show you how you can get free from the financial stress that you're under. And all of a sudden, man, the word of the Lord comes to you. Maybe you're here this morning and say, you know, Pastor Mitch, I didn't realize that Jesus was alive. I thought he was just like some mythical figure, some historical figure. I didn't realize he wants to guide me. All this time, I've been living for me and walking with me and doing what I want to do. And Jesus, I'm so sorry. And just yield to him and just turn over to him and let him guide you. Let him lead you. Let him direct your steps. And all of a sudden, you realize, man, when I wake up in the morning, I've got purpose. I've got passion. I've got joy. There's just an excitement in my life about the things of God. Why? Because I've turned my life over to him. I'm no longer living for self. I'm living for him. Every day I get up to say, Jesus, just fill me. Jesus, fill me with your presence. Fill me with your purpose. Fill me with your promises. God, just fill me, fill me, fill me. And the spirit of God just comes in and he just fills you up. Instead of being always under circumstances, all the depression and fear and worry and anxiety and all the high level of stress that's just gripped us as a nation, you can be free. You can walk free this morning. If you'll just stand with me, I'm trying to give an altar call, but I ain't got there yet, so you'll stand. This is between you and your God. This is between you and the Lord. But let me just stop for just a moment. If you've not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, this is your moment to give your life a surrender to him, saying, Jesus, just follow me as I pray out loud. You pray this along with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to cleanse me. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your spirit. And the spirit of God will come. Those online, the spirit of God will come and he'll touch your heart and he'll change you from the inside out. Now, for those of you who've dared to come and be bold this morning, I just want to give you an invitation. We're going to have an open altar this morning. We'll ask you to spread out a little bit so you don't crowd one another. But if you need a word from the Lord, you need God just to speak to you. You'd like to just have that. Just Maybe you're just curious. What would he say to you? I don't know. But if you will come forward, we're going to take just a few minutes and let the Lord just minister to you. Let the Lord just saturate you. Let him just speak to you. His presence is here. It's almost like gardening. You're just going to let the Lord just plant seeds in your life this morning. It's going to be uh, just giving you some seeds of destiny. He spoke to Zechariah about the destiny of his son, John. He spoke to Mary about the destiny of her life and the life of her husband and her children and what Jesus would do. Let the Lord come and speak to you this morning. As we just open the altar and just saying, Lord, just I come forward. I'm expecting you to speak and minister to me. Let your prophetic word be a yes and amen in my life. Let it be like Mary. Be it unto me according to your word, O Lord. Let the Lord just minister to you as we sing. We'll stay up here. Just invite you to stay right here. Stay in this moment. Believe for God to speak to every person, every heart. Whatever the situation is, let him minister to you in Jesus' name. So pour it out. Let your love run here and now, let your glory fill this house. Help me out. Let your love run over. Here and now, let your glory fill this house. Pour it out. Let your love run over. Here and now. Let your glory fill this house, pour it out, let your love run over, here and now, let your glory fill this house.
Let your glory fill this house. Let your love fill So if you are here, you come up for this altar call, and you give it to God and leave it at the altar. He desires, because you wonder, well, he's telling you right now, his heart is to set you free. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. And if you're watching online, then I want to encourage you now to get on your knees before the Lord, wherever you're at. If you're serious enough about getting rid of this addiction, you can get on your knees. This is between you and God. And to say, God, I want that. I, that prophetic word, I'm answering like Mary and saying, be it unto me as you have said. And leave it at the altar. I've heard testimonies this week again in the United States, not just in other countries, but what God is doing here, and he's doing that. People that are addicts are going to bed at night one way and waking up another, and they're not wanting that drug, that substance, whatever it is, anymore. And God is no respecter of persons. He desires that for you, and he'll do it for you. If you surrender it to him, today is your day. Amen. I also feel like the Lord's lifting just some heaviness. To use metaphorical language, it's like a heavy, thick, black cloud coming down. I just see the Lord just lifting it up. Rays of sunshine penetrating. I see a joy. I see a lightness of heart for you. And I just want you to know, just receive it as an act of the Lord. Just take it as His, uh, His joy and filling you full of His spirit, filling you full of His joy, His life, His, His peace that will just lift the anxiety. I also see some fear that's controlled different people, and I see God just setting you free. So we're going to continue to worship for a little bit longer. We'll be dismissed in just a moment, but let the Lord just saturate you. Just He's taken all this time to overcome. You've driven all this way. You've come here. Here you are. Let's just ask God just to continue, continue to do the work that he's doing in your lives. Just receive from him, and then just let us know later on what the Lord spoke to you. And just be a, a doer of the word. Put an action step to it. If the Lord tells you, uh, you know, to read your Bible or pray more or do whatever, just be obedient. Let the Lord lead and guide you in this moment in Jesus' name. So, Pastor McCon, you go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pour it out, pour it out, pour it out, Lord. Yeah. It is for freedom, Christ to set us free. It is for freedom, Christ to set us free. It is for freedom, Christ to set us free. So pour it out, let your love run
Let your glory fill this house. Pour it out. Let your love run over here and now. Let your glory fill this house. I invite you to stay up here, be a part, but let me just pray over you, Lord. Bless this congregation. Bless the people watching online. Father, we pray that you would bless and let your face shine upon them. Father, let your peace go before them and may they be filled with joy everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to stay a little longer. You guys are free to be dismissed. Pastor McConaughey, you go ahead. Sunset's free is free and deep. Yeah, he whom the sun sets free is free and deep. Oh, he whom the sun sets free is free and deep. Free and deep. Yeah, he whom the sun sets free is free and deep. officially dismissed right now. Those of you who've been joining us online, so glad that you were here. God bless you. Go with God. Those of you here, also go with God. Bless you.
Just one move with my arms stretched wide. I will. 